My name is Shane Reed, and I want to share with you the secrets of cross-examination. But before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about myself, because there's a lot of bad advice out there. I've written an award-winning, best-selling trial advocacy textbook called Winning at Trial. It's used by lawyers and law schools throughout the country. And it won the Association for Continuing Legal Education's top honor for professional excellence. I'm currently a professor at SMU University where I've taught trial advocacy there for over 10 years as an adjunct professor. I graduated from the University of Texas School of Law and went to college at Yale. So now that you've heard a little bit about me, let's look at the first secret of cross-examination. The truth is no one confesses on cross-examination, but Hollywood would have you believe differently. One of the greatest scenes in any Hollywood movie is from A Few Good Men, and the defense attorney, played by Tom Cruise, is cross-examining Colonel Jessup, played by Jack Nicholson. Tom Cruise has no evidence to back up his questions, but he believes he can get Jack Nicholson to confess to giving an unlawful military order. Tom Cruise says, I want to know the truth, and Jack Nicholson responds, you can't handle the truth and proceeds to confess to giving an unlawful order. However, that only happens in Hollywood. So the first secret about cross-examination is don't try and get your witness to confess. So here are the topics that will work. An acronym is CLIPS. C for credibility. Is the witness biased for the other side, or has he exaggerated? Is there something to attack his credibility with? Has the witness testified about one thing, but lacks knowledge about a critical part of the case? Has the witness made an implausible statement? That is a statement that just doesn't ring true when based on common sense. Has the witness made prior inconsistent statements, either written, orally, or in a deposition? And finally, most often witnesses have something that will support your case. So cross-examine to help your case. Let's look at the technique on cross-examination. Almost every question should be a leading question. And a leading question is simply one that suggests the answer to the witness, either yes or no. And let's look at this slide. The robbery happened on February 21st, didn't it? And in green on this slide, I've listed words that will help you force the witness to answer yes. You were near the liquor store, right? You were in your car, weren't you? And so on. By using these words, you can force the witness to answer the way you want to. The biggest mistake attorneys make in asking leading questions is they get argumentative and they ask compound questions with multiple facts in them. The problem with that is if you ask the witness a question with several facts, the witness can truthfully deny the question and you don't know which fact he's denying. So in this example, the attorney is asked, the confrontation was angry, intense, and physical, wasn't it? The witness can truthfully deny and you have no idea which fact he's denying. So instead of asking a question with several facts, the key is, to ask a leading question that has only one fact in it. And the questions would be, the confrontation was angry. The confrontation was intense. The confrontation was physical. So if you won't try and get your witness to confess, use the acronym CLIPS for your topics on cross-examination and ask a majority of your questions with only one fact in them. I guarantee you, you'll be successful on your next cross-examination. I can't share with you all the facts in this short video, and that's why I wrote the book, Winning at Trial. It's a best-selling textbook that's been used by law schools and lawyers throughout the country. And in that book, I explain all the details, everything from jury selection to closing argument. If you're interested in the book and want to learn more about it, go to winningattrial.com to see sample chapters and buy the book.